Hey guys, welcome back to Alaska Guamas, and today we've got a different thing for you because you've seen where I did the briskets in the past. Well, today I'm going to cook some street tacos. I used to live in Mexico, my wife is from Mexico, and um, so we became very accustomed to good quality street tacos. And today I'm going to show you how we would make them if we were living in Mexico or, you know, just how we make them, period, when we're doing them. My wife's going to make homemade refried beans and rice, and I'm going to do the meats and the tacos and chop up the cilantro and chop up the onions, the las cebollas, as it were. And we're going to get started. So come with us, and I hope you enjoy. So for today's street tacos, we're going to use basically tenderloin or commonly known as filet mignon, which it sounds excessive, I get it, but uh, I got this stuff for $9.99 a pound, $9.99 a pound. Uh, it's obviously not high quality, as you can see just from the size of it, but it cuts up really well and it's nice and tender when you're eating your tacos. Some people like Chuck, I actually really like Chuck. Sometimes I'll use ribeye, you know, just depends on how, what my mood is, but better off to use something that, that's a little bit more fatty. I realize the filet mignon is not necessarily fatty, but it is tender and I'm gonna put enough flavor into it. But as you're gonna see, let's, uh, let's do it. Now, we're gonna open up the, the filet mignon packet and we're gonna start cutting it up. I use napkins, when I pulled this out, I didn't want to rinse it off because I don't wanna get all that pulled off of here. But uh, I also don't want the blood all over the place. So now what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna kinda of just go through, clean it up of all the silver skin, and get the meat prepped to be able to use four tacos because I'm gonna come back and then I am going to dice it up or cube it up, however you want to call it. So what I want to do is I want to get these cut up really kind of small like this. So as you can see, I don't know if you can see that very well on this, this plate. And then I'm going to get them even smaller and put them in this stainless steel bowl. Because the magic happens at the end when, with the marinade because we're going to end up putting it in a marinade where it's going to sit for a half an hour or so. And you're going to see that I use two items for seasoning my meat and that's it. One is a pre-packaged seasoning and one is a marinade that's also pre-packaged. And so we're just going to cut it up into small little pieces that are bite-sized and because they're tenderloin, they're super, super tender. And really, the marinade that I'm gonna use, is called Mojo Criollo. And um, I used to use another brand, I think it was, it may have been El Mexicano or La Mexicana, I don't remember. It may have been a different brand, I can't really recall. But lately, I've been buying Goya. Goya is local, it's a lot easier to find up here in Alaska than the other brand I used to buy and I'm finding that I actually like it better and it's got Moho Criollo is a is a citrusy vinegary um garlicky kind of marinade and so usually you would use it on a tougher cut of meat because you know tougher cuts of meat are typically less expensive and so they're easier to come by and so you'll use this kind of a marinade on your tougher cuts of meat in order to soften them up obviously to make them a little bit more tender here that's not as much an issue but I really just like the flavor of that vinegary citrusy garlicky uh, marinade and here in a few I'm going to show you what that looks like but in the meantime I'm going to go ahead and keep cutting this up and we'll catch you when it's done
this one is from Goya, and I can't can't see anything without my eyes. Um, it says, well, live it up your your beef, chicken, or pork. But it has, uh, what does it have in here? I don't even know. But it's a citrusy, so agua, sal, concentrado de jugo de marin. I don't even know what that is. Concentrado de jugo de limón. So lemon, cebollas, onion, especies, spices, azúcar, which would be sugar. So it's just um, a, a bunch of stuff. It has orange juice in it, concentrate, water, salt. But it's like I said, it's a garlicky, citrusy, um, vinegary kind of a, a thing. And so what I'll do is I will just take and I pour this all over the meat. And because it's vinegary, it's going to marinate all of this. And by the time we pull the meat out of here, it'll actually be in more brown than it is pink. And we didn't shake it up enough, so all the spices got there. But it's okay, because what we want to do, we would then want to come back in with our hands and start picking this meat up and moving it around so that it this penetrates all of the open area between the meat so that every piece of meat in here gets vinegar on it. Or this, this marinade, anyway. And so, and I'm going to push it down and just kind of let it sit here. We're going to let it marinate for about a half an hour. So after it's marinated, once we put it on the griddle, the comal in Spanish, once we do that, we're going to sprinkle on this stuff. It's called it's Chef Marito for uh, seasoning for carne asada. And um, carne asada and bistec, it says. So... This is it. It's just basically this marinade and this, and you get some really flavorful meat. A lot of times I go and I have carne asada tacos. That's what we call them here. They're actually called bistec tacos. But we have carne asada tacos, and the meat is actually not that great. You end up with kind of a bland steak, and it's really the salsa that you put on it that gets you the flavor. Whereas um, I like to have my meat to have a little bit of flavor, but I also want that salsa. I want that cilantro, I want that onion to all be there. And then, as you're going to see here, we're going to talk about in a second, the way that I prepare, prepare my tortillas for these tacos changes the flavor altogether as well. So, um, let's get out to the, let's let this marinate. And the next time we flip over, we're going to be grilling these on the griddle. Now we're going to go ahead and put the meat down on the griddle, as you can see right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this meat down. It's been marinating for about a half hour, maybe a little bit longer. As you can see, like I said, it comes out considerably more brown. Because it's basically the enzymes have been working on the meat to really get in there and tenderize it. So after I get these on here, mostly I'm just going to put it all on the top, you know, just right in the middle. And then eventually spread it all out. Once I spread it out, I'm going to put my seasoning on it. Okay, now I'm going to put on the Chef Marito that I was telling you about. So we'll go ahead and put a nice big thick layer on top of all the meat. And we're only going to do this once. So you want to get it nice and covered. Nice and good. If you do it too many times, if you do it twice... Then you get too much seasoning in your meat. If you do it once and stir it around, then you get just the right amount of seasoning. Ooh, we got nice, a uh, nice seal on that. I'm gonna set this down here. Hopefully that doesn't melt there. And we're going to stir this around a bit. And you can see that so many of the juices are cooking out of this thing that the dogs have gathered around the griddle. Try and look up all those juices that are flowing out over the over the edge. And it looks like actually this meat is probably cooked. Cooked enough, but I'd like to get it browned. So we're gonna see if we can't leave it on here just a little bit longer. So Martha made 
homemade refried beans, which is what we we typically do, and also homemade Mexican rice. Again, it's what we typically do. And what I want to show you here is that you know inside of this Costco coconut oil jar, we have basically it's what it's it's basically beef tallow. So what I do. What I do is I will, the briskets is I will cut off all the fat and then I'll render them down in either the crock pot or I will render them in a standard skillet and, and get the grease from them. Because we don't eat lard, we don't eat pork in our house, we don't um, actually have that kind of fat, right? So that's what you think of when you think of refried beans is lard and that's what makes them juicy and not juicy but creamy and just delicious. Well, we don't do that. So what we've started doing is is buying briskets. And we'll typically, our ground beef that we use at home is I grind out all my own meat. So we'll grind uh, brisket and we will then take, cut off that fat that we've, we've used or the, the fat that we've cut off, we'll render it down and we'll put it in this jar as beef tallow. And that is what you're going to see here that we put and we use for our tortillas. So what I forgot to mention was the meat is done and it's over here. I don't know if you want to pan over to that, David. The meat's done, it's in the house. And now we're gonna come in and I'm gonna take a piece of this beef tallow and I'm gonna get it all over our coman. I'm gonna rub it all over. I want it greasy. Not greasy, greasy, but greasy. You know, not fancy schmancy, but fancy. And we're going to do it on this one as well because we're going to use this. We're going to use both of these griddles, these electric griddles, these comales, as we say in Spanish. When you use those, I'm going to come in and now we're going to put our tortillas on them. I'm going to put them on, flip them, boom. Put it on, flip. Put it on, flip, so that we got grease on both sides. And this is the secret ingredient to making these tacos taste really, really good. Because it gives them a, a just a slight beef flavor. And it also, putting the grease on there does more than just give it a flavor. It also gives it a, um, a texture that doesn't break when you fold it up for a tortilla because you can even even when you heat up these corn tortillas you come back in and you know after a certain amount of time they dry out and they will give you uh they'll basically crumble and folding whereas here i can get in there roll them in the oil Get oil on both sides and that is going to make a huge difference in the way these tortillas come out and also another thing that on the way we would do our our tacos is we will like I said we get our tortillas hot but we're gonna double these tortillas up and then we're gonna stuff them full of meat and add cilantro and cebolla so I'm going to take this, turn this over, get it nice and hot, nice and and delicious. And we're going to go from there. Right here, we've got four tacos on the griddle, four tacos over there. We've got two people that are going to be ready to eat in just a in short order. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double stack these like this. See that? And now something that my wife and I found. Right here, we found this little taco thing. I don't, even, I don't even know what it is. I don't know what people use it for. But I am going to use it to stuff and create tacos. I'm going to put one here. Ow, 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 ow. Ouch. One here. ¿Cómo estamos con la cilantro, Marta? Good. El cilantro, ¿ya está bien? ¿Estamos listos? Okay, so... I don't know. I've never used this thing before. That's the first time. So hopefully this is going to work. 
to do four at a time. How many tacos do you want, Peter? Uh, Three, four, four. four? Yep. Okay. So we're gonna do these four. You got a plate ready, babe? Marisa? Okay. Oof. Take these. Oh, Gotta stuff these with meat. Go ahead, sugar. Uh oh, we're dropping. We're all over the floor. Um. That's why we have dogs. Cilantro and cebolla on the tacos. So now I have a little bit of lemon because it's imperative with uh, tacos. I'm going to go ahead and squirt a little lemon juice on top, lime juice rather, on top of these tacos and let's see how they taste. I'm guessing they're pretty amazing, but we'll see. Mm. Wow. Delicious. So next time your friends say to you, hey, let's make some street tacos. Just remember, all you need is a little meat, onion, cilantro, mojo criollo, and a little bit of Chef Morito. Beef tallow if you've got it. Otherwise, you know, if you use lard, use lard for your uh, beans and for your, your tortillas. But aside from that, I think I'm just going to eat. I'm going to enjoy this dinner and uh, I hope you have a good day. Thanks for watching.